Okay, so you will be presented with this screen when Logic Pro begins. And it is as easy as just selecting Empty Project and hitting Choose to get started. Of course, if we click on the caret here to expand details, we can make some changes to our project before we even begin. Let's also make a note here that uh, these are called projects, and essentially a project is your song. It's a number of tracks and all of the recorded instruments and vocals and everything else that you would do. It's all in a project. Now you can select your tempo, key signature, time signature, your input device, and output device. So if you want to select a microphone that you have connected or a guitar interface or a MIDI keyboard, you can choose that from here. For the output device, that's where you're going to hear it. I have screen recording set up, so that's why I have those set up there now. Sample rate, um, we'll go ahead and leave all of these pretty much the way they are for this example. And live loops is something else for a different time. We won't really be discussing that in this video. We're just going to go ahead and create a new empty project. We'll go ahead and click on choose. And you'll see that you are once again given another pop-up selection window. Here we have five main buttons to choose from. I'll give you a secret. They are really just two different options. Software instrument, external MIDI, and drummer are all heavily reliant on the software side of things, whereas audio typically means you'll be recording a guitar or bass live, either directly through the computer or through an amp, or maybe you'll be recording singing or vocals through a microphone. And you'll notice here for software instrument, we can select an empty channel strip, or we can go ahead and click that to choose the software that it's going to load before we even click create. Now don't worry, even if you were to choose one of these and you change your mind, you can always add another track or start over very easily. To begin here, let's go ahead and create a software instrument. So that's selected and we will click create. And as you can see, you now have a track here. If you were to pull your mouse over to the bottom edge, you'll see the double arrows. You can pull down to zoom in on the track. This can also be done over here in the top right with the arrows up and down. And once you see the waveform recordings on the screen later on, you can expand and contract that as well. One other thing to note here as well, if you put your mouse right here where I have it on this line, you can also click and drag and it's going to give you a whole new list of options. Some of these will be good to know right away, but some of them are more advanced. For now, I'm going to hide that and maybe come back to it when it's more relevant. Let's go ahead and do a brief synopsis of what all the buttons are, starting from the top left. You'll see here we have the library. If we click on that, it's going to give us a new column on the left. What that does is opens up all of the built-in sounds that come with Logic Pro. And as you can see, there are quite a few from bass to drums to guitar, keyboards, percussion, orchestral such as violin and cello and other strings, piano, horns, synthesizers, and on and on. If you'll notice here, you'll see these arrows. And what that is, is you click on that to download all of the available instruments. If you click on bass, for example, you'll see that fingerstyle bass, Liverpool bass, picked bass, and stinger bass are all in the bold white font, but the other ones are all grayed, and the ones that have the arrow next to them are not downloaded and installed on my computer yet. Um, it is possible for you to download every single instrument and sound, and you can even transfer those to an external hard drive, but I would recommend just getting them one at a time when you're getting started, unless you have a very specific reason for needing all of them at once. So the next icon over is the circle with the lowercase i in it, and that's the inspector. 
When you click on the inspector, it brings up a column. And quick note, you can have multiple columns side by side like that. But in the inspector column, it's going to give you some more advanced information about the track that you're currently working with. A great thing to note for a beginner is this question mark in the circle, and that's the quick help button. So if you have that on, it'll give you this window, and then when you hover over things, it will start to display the information relevant to what you're hovering over. And then over here we have the toolbar, and what that does is it's another way of opening this toolbar here across the top, like I had showed a moment ago, where I had dragged it down with the mouse. Over here we have the smart controls. This next one here is the mixer and this is a very important one to take note of. This is where you will eventually mix the levels of all of your tracks, add effects, add any other plugins, compression, EQ, reverbs, all of that kind of thing, and finally do the mixing and mastering. If you're going to do that within Logic Pro, this is where you would do that. So you will use this section quite frequently. One thing to note is that you can adjust the size of this window if you click on this blue line. You can go down or up. And then over here, the scissors icon is your editor. On the bottom here, it opens up the piano roll. And this is another place that you will most likely be spending a lot of time. You can edit your MIDI files here, and you can even record from a um, MIDI device, like a MIDI keyboard, and see the notes, and you can adjust them. Okay, so continuing on to the right, to the middle, now at the top, we have, of course, rewind, forward, stop, play, record, and cycle. And in this middle part here, you'll see where it says bar and beat. This corresponds to where your playhead is. That's what this is called. You'll see how it says bar five. We have five here. So if we move over to nine, we'll have nine there. And since we're in four, four time, each time we move one beat, that will increase as well. And on and on. where it says 120 and keep, that's referring to the tempo. If you want to adjust the tempo, you can click and either drag up or down. Where it says keep, you can click on that. You can change to adapt or auto. And there's some pretty cool things you can do with the tempo on Logic Pro, but for demonstration purposes right now, we're going to keep it at keep. That will always give us a consistent tempo. And of course we have the time signature, which we can change, and the key that we're in, we can also change. Then we have the replace button. We have a tuning fork, which is something I use very often with my guitar and bass. We have the solo button. This one with the one, two, three, four, that's going to count you in. So you'll get a one, two, three, four. Well, actually, it'll be a click, 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 click before it actually starts recording. If you want to keep the metronome on, that's what this one is. So that'll keep that metronome clicking during the entire track while you're recording. Over here, this is the master volume, which this is important to know because you can lower the overall volume of the song without actually having to lower the tracks. Trust me, you won't want to lower the tracks once you get them set up perfectly. Now over to the top right, we have the list editors. If you click on that, it'll bring up the events in the song. Of course, right now we don't have any. You would see them here. This next icon is the notepad, and this is a very cool feature to have. You can actually edit it and make notes about the song. Okay, perfect. And even if you click done and you close that, that will save. So you can always use this to write down lyrics or make any notes you have really. I like to write down the chords that I'm playing on guitar. And we have the loop browser. This will give you some, some of the loops that are built in and you can drag those in. And then we have the browsers window. What I'd like to do now is actually create a track with you. So if you were here and you wanted to begin a song, you would click on the library first and you can select one of the virtual instruments. 
So let's go ahead and select the grand piano and pad. And as you can see, it gives us a piano icon. There's a few ways we can start to record some sound. One of them is to go to the window at the top here, click on show musical typing. This will then bring up a keyboard on screen that we can either use the mouse or we can use our actual keyboard. Of course, if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can plug that in as well. Another thing we can do here is click on Editor, and this gives us our piano roll. And here we can actually place notes on the roll ourselves. If you press Command and then click, it'll put the notes in. As you can see, it's labeled here as C3, of course, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then to C4. So it keeps going up an octave. Keep in mind over here in the top right, you can also change the size of the piano roll, depending on how close in you need to be or zoomed out. From here, what you can do is click and drag That'll select all three notes. And if you hover your mouse over to the right, it'll give you that little bracket icon. And you can click that to make the note shorter or longer. So now that note carries out for the whole four beats. Just like that. Another thing you can do while they're highlighted like this is hold the option key on the keyboard and drag. can do this multiple times. Once you have our four chords here, we can also select all of them. If we were to go to the right edge of one of these and click and drag, because they're all selected, all four of them move in unison now. And so what you can do with this is use this to quickly move them all together. So now when we play it, notice how it did all four chords, um, how it played all four chords separately. And of course, you can drag these up. And down. One of the coolest things about Logic 2 is if you have the three notes selected, it'll show you which chord it's playing. So in this case, it's an A flat. We can make that a C, B flat, and back to A flat. Another cool thing we can do with the piano roll editor is I have these selected. We can go to where it says time quantize classic. We have one sixteenth note selected. And once you click that, it actually moves them into place. Another important thing to notice here is where it says velocity is currently at 80. You can use the slider here to adjust how intense it's going to play. And to give it a more human feel, you might change some of them to be stronger some of them to be quieter and even individual notes can be played slightly different from the other ones. You can also use the scale quantize if you were to select C major for example it'll put them into the appropriate scale. So what we can do now with our four chords we have them all selected we can press and hold the option button on the keyboard and duplicate them. And so now that sounds like pretty fast. Let's go ahead and change the tempo here. We're able to adjust the tempo by clicking and dragging. And what we can do up here, where we have this green box, if we click on that to highlight it, we can also use the option drag method here to duplicate. When you press option and drag, it always keeps 
the original box right where it is, but it gives you a duplicate that is an identical match, which you can put anywhere along the track. In this case, we're going to repeat. And what we could do if, say, we wanted to have this repeat another 12 times, we can select all four and drag all four at once as well, and then select all eight and drag all eight. And now we quickly have an entire verse here. So let's also mention the cycle button here. If you click that, it'll give you this golden yellow bar across the top. If you click the edge and drag, you can change how far across it's gonna go. It'll only play that looped section over and over and over again. And one thing to keep in mind with this is that you can record in cycle mode. So if you're trying to record an instrumental part, you can record in cycle mode and it'll just keep going until you stop and it'll give you multiple takes, which you can then splice together to get that perfect take. But we'll go ahead and turn the cycle mode off. We're gonna add another track. To do that, we're gonna click on the plus button here, which is new tracks, or we could go up to where it says track in the menu bar and click on new tracks. So when we choose a track type for this, we'll choose drummer. Okay, so for the drummer, we'll choose rock and create. And what this does is, is it opens the library, but with a very special library window for the drummer. You can choose your different genres. From that list, you can choose the different AI drummer, and they'll all have slightly different styles. The default one here is Kyle, and you can choose a drum kit from this section below. Right now, we have SoCal selected, and down in this window, we have our drum controls. We have some beat presets, and if you click on them, this little indication here will give you an idea of how it's going to sound based off this grid from simple to complex and from soft to loud. So if you were to go all the way up to loud and all the way to the right to complex, let's listen to that, but we're going to mute our piano track. So that's this M. And again, I think that's kind of too slow now, so let's change that tempo to 120, which is the default. And over here, we can actually choose which parts of the drums are being used. You can switch over to the toms and increase the intensity of the toms. You can add percussion, such as a tambourine, maracas, or claps, and increase the intensity of that. And where it says kick and snare, this will change the overall style of the kick drum and snare drum all the way up to two times speed or half times speed. And then we have the follow option. If you click that, it'll allow you to follow along with one of the tracks that you've created. If we unmute that track now, you'll notice that it should play a beat that goes well with it. Pretty interesting song we have here. Also keep in mind, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. If you were to hover over to the right, you can actually change the length of the track. And over here where it says fills, you can increase that all the way up or all the way down. And you'll notice the waveform changes. It's gonna give us a pretty big fill there. I'm gonna switch now from the toms to the hi-hat to demonstrate the details section. You can give more of a push or pull feel. Let's give it a slight push. Let's add a lot of ghost notes. And if we uncheck the automatic box, we can actually change the hi-hat to an open hi-hat or a closed hi-hat. Let's go all the way to open. Let's see how that sounds. So you can have a lot of fun messing with these. There's so many options, it's pretty insane. Let's go ahead and add another track by clicking on the plus icon here, and we'll choose software instrument and create. Gonna make that a little bit bigger. And 
the library is is open let's click on base let's do Liverpool base and an interesting thing you can do here is you can highlight the MIDI data from your piano and using option starting to notice that the option key is very important here I hope if you hold option you can actually drag those down now you have that same MIDI information copied over to a different instrument so if we play that let me turn that down a little bit Now we have the bass doing that same thing, but what I would do here is deselect these and just select one of them. We're over in the editor window again. And for bass, I would probably just get rid of everything but the root notes for this demonstration. And I would highlight the four of them and you can hover over it to see which note you're on. We're at um, A2 now, so I would drag that down to A1. And I would go ahead and just delete these. Option drag to duplicate. And then what I would do here is just select all of these other tracks and then hit the delete key on the keyboard. And now let's copy and paste these. Again, once you have four, you can drag all four, select eight, and then drag all eight. And look how quickly you have the bass line now. We can also duplicate our drums. and we're starting to get a song kind of a weird song but it's something by now i hope you can see that the possibilities are endless with all of the built-in software and all the built-in instruments and sounds you can just keep adding more through that plus icon software instrument and then choose from your library such as synthesizer here you can go with strings authentic strings we can drag the bass line down You can edit multiple bars at once in the editor if you select them and, and drag down as well. It might be a good time to show you the mixer window. So let's click on that. And again, I'm dragging it up to see as much information as I can. You'll notice that Logic labels them all for you at the bottom, and it corresponds with what it says up here. So we have Grand Piano, SoCal for the drums, Liverpool Bass, Authentic Strings, and then we have these. Um, and what these are, Small Hall, Large Hall, Small Room, those are actually bus sends from the other instruments, such as the drums, and that's a whole other subject. It's a little bit more advanced but just know that those are fine and you don't really need to mess with those right now what you do want to notice though is you can look where it says audio effects you already have a few things here but this is where you can add in more effects amps pedals distortion reverb chorus phaser um, equalizer compression change the pitch there's a ton of things you can do here including this is where you would add third-party effects once you've installed those and where it says sends this is what we were talking about here with the bus sends and you can see that they are already pre-set up for you when you selected it where it says db here this is decibels the white part is how low you have it set on the fader and then the green is how loud it's playing if you were to start playing your song you would want to take a look at the green parts to see what levels you're getting And from here you can adjust the volume for each one until you get it to how you like it to sound. Over here where it says stereo out, this is your overall decibel level. We were at negative 3.8, now we're at about negative 5. I like to keep the stereo out to about a negative 6. So that pretty much covers the software instrument section for now. Let's go ahead and add in an audio track. So again, click the plus sign and let's click on audio. 
For audio input, you'll see at the bottom where it says device, it'll, if you have something like a Focusrite or an M audio device or something like that, you'll see that there. If you need to change that, you can click on it. It'll bring up preferences and then audio, and then you can change the um, input and output here. Let's actually change this to the JLab Taco microphone. Okay, we'll click apply. And so I closed it out and brought it back up just to refresh it. Now it says device JLab Taco microphone, and we'll go ahead and leave the output alone and just click on create. You can see that it's picking up my voice. If I were to click on this little eye icon, that's input monitoring, and this will allow me to hear it. So now I can hear myself. And at this point, you would actually be ready to record from the microphone directly just by clicking on the red icon like this. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. That was kind of my uh, Ian Curtis impression, you know, from Joy Division, if you get the reference. But um, yeah, so you get the point with that there. Um, let's go over some of the things on the tracks themselves. I showed you the M before is to mute. And when they get grayed out like that, that means they're muted. And then right next to the M is the S, and that's pretty much the opposite. It's the solo button. And so it, that will automatically mute out everything but that track. You can actually solo out multiple tracks at once. If you click on that big S, it'll actually turn the solo off for all of them. And the R is the record button, so you can use this to change which track you'll actually be recording. See how it changes to red here? But I want to go back to this one, I would click that. You'd want to pay attention to that, of course, when you're trying to do an actual recording. And this little wheel here is pan, so you can go left or right. And Let me just demonstrate this. One thing to keep in mind, too, is if you have multiple tracks selected like this, if you try to change one of the tracks, it's actually going to affect all of them. As you can see, the other wheels start to move as I move this track. And let me tell you, that's pretty frustrating when you don't mean to do that. Keep an eye on that. But if we just click on one of the tracks, now we can just adjust the one. I'd also like to show you real quick, back in the mixer window, now we have the new audio one track, which was my voice. If we click on that track, we can still make an adjustment to the sound through the library. For example, if we click on voice, choose any of these uh, presets. So I think some of the fun ones are an experimental here. Let's see, we have megaphone vocal, so. If you don't like that, you can hit Command Z to go back. And probably should have mentioned that earlier. If you have a Mac, you're probably f quite familiar. Command Z will always take you back a step or edit to undo recording. And there you go. For now, I think that covers quite a few of the basics. You can, of course, connect a guitar or a keyboard or any other instrument you see fit and record that as well, but we'll be going over that in more detail in a later video. For now I just wanted to give you an idea of how you could get started and what some of the buttons do and some of the shortcuts are. If you have any questions, of course by all means put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, I wish you all the best in learning logic, and I'll see you in the next video.